Greetings and welcome back, math people of YouTube. Because we're all math nerds here, our concept of a threesome is evaluating a triple integral, so that's exactly what we have today. We have the integral over the volume element, 0 to 1 cubed, of log x plus xy plus xyz dx dy dz. So a nice little integral for fun here. And the first thing we could do here is factor out an x from the argument of the logarithm so that we have the integral over 0 to 1 cubed of log x times 1 plus y plus yz dx dy dz and using the properties of the logarithm and the linearity of the integration operator we have the integral over 0 to 1 cubed of log x dx dy dz plus the integral over 0 to 1 cubed of log 1 plus y plus yz dx terribly sorry about that i'm gonna need a bit of writing space here dy dz okay cool so for the first integral notice that this is just the integral from 0 to 1 of log x dx times the double integral from 0 to 1 of dy dz so this thing here just evaluates out to 1, and the other integral can be solved using integration by parts, which we'll get to in a little bit. And here we have the integral from 0 to 1 of dx times the double integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus y plus yz dy dz. So performing the integration by parts, we have x times log x, minus the integral from 0 to 1, terribly sorry, I forgot the limits, the limits here being 0 and 1, and we have x times 1 over x dx, plus the integral over x sorting out to 1, and we have the integral over 0 to 1 squared of log 1 plus, terribly sorry about that, y plus yz dy dz. So this thing converges to 0, and then we have minus integral of 1 from 0 to 1, which of course sorts out to 1. So finally, we have, so far anyway, i equal to negative 1 plus the integral over 0 to 1 squared of log 1 plus y times 1 plus z. And here, we can adopt an integration by parts approach by first integrating with respect to y. So carrying out the integration by parts, we have first this outer integral with respect to z from 0 to 1. And for the integration by parts, note that we'll just have y times log 1 plus y times 1 plus z minus the integral from 0 to 1 of what exactly? Well, we have y and then differentiating the logarithm gives us 1 over 1 plus y times 1 plus z. And then differentiating the argument because of the chain rule gives us this factor of 1 plus z up top, which is actually going to be pretty convenient. Oh, terribly. Sorry about that. dz. Okay, cool. And once again, I forgot the limits. The limits here being 0 and 1. So this thing sorts out to integral 0 to 1 of... And the limit as y goes to 1, we have 1 times log 1 plus 1 plus z, so that's just log z plus 2, minus the integral from 0 to 1 of, you know what, I'm just going to make use of the linearity of the integration operator here, the integration with respect to z, that is. So we have dz here, minus a double integral from 0 to 1 of y times 1 plus z over 1 plus y times 1 plus z dy dz. So again, we can invoke integration by parts for one of these integrals. Let me just highlight that in a different color. Terribly sorry about that. So this thing would sort out to, well, z plus 2 times log, terribly sorry about that, z plus 2 minus the integral of z plus 2 over z plus 2, where we've made use of Dr. Payam's brilliant integration by parts trick, integrals 0 to 1, and of course this sorts out to in the limit as 
z approaches 1, we have 3 times log 3 minus as z approaches 0, we have 2 times log 2 minus again 1. Okay, cool. So reverting back to orange to continue our working, that means we have 3 times log 3 minus 2 times log 2 minus 1 times log e and minus 1 times log 1 as well, because log 1 is just 0. Anyway, so we have integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1 of, I could expand this by 0, and the version of 0 I want to use here would be 1 minus 1. So we have 1 plus y times 1 plus z minus 1 divided by 1 plus y times 1 plus z dy dz, and the utility of this is that now we have a considerably more simple integrand. So we have 3 times log 3 minus 2 times log 2 minus 1 minus integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1 of 1 minus 1 over 1 plus y times 1 plus z. Yeah, that's exactly what it works out to. Integration first with respect to y and then with respect to z. And now carrying out the integration is pretty straightforward. So we have 3 times log 3 minus 2 log 2 minus 1 minus integral 0 to 1. Integrating, integrating with respect to y gives us y minus, let's see, we have log of 1 plus y times 1 plus z over 1 plus z, limits being 0 and 1. So evaluating the limits gives us 3 log 3 minus 2 log 2, terribly sorry about that, minus 1, minus the integral from 0 to 1. In the limit as y approaches 1, we indeed have 1 minus log mm, z plus 2 over z plus 1, minus as y approaches 0, we have 0 minus log 1 over something, and log 1 over something is, of course, 0. So finally, we have another integral of 1, which sorts out to 1, of course. So we have 3 log 3 minus 2 log 2 and minus 2 plus the integral from 0 to 1, terribly sorry about that, of log z plus 2 over z plus 1 dz. Now let's pause for a moment to evaluate this integral that I'm going to call i sub 1. So i sub 1 equals integral 0 to 1 log z plus 2 over z plus 1 dz. And I'm going to invoke a substitution here that may seem strange at first, but there's, there's a method to every madness. So we're going to let z plus 1 here equal negative t. And the utility of that is z plus 2 would be 1 minus t. And as z approaches 0, we see that t here approaches negative 1. And as z approaches 1, t should approach negative 2. So i sub 1 equals the integral from negative 1 to negative 2 of log 1 minus t over negative t. And differentiating this equation here, of course, means that dz is just negative dt, which is pretty convenient because the negative signs just cancel out. And we're left with integral negative 1 to negative 2 log 1 minus t over t dt. And now we can invoke the dilogarithm here, where we know that the integral from z1 to z2 of log 1 minus t over t dt, this thing does indeed sort out to, wait, I'm probably missing a negative sign here and there somewhere. Ah, it's, it's handled this way. This thing is equals log z1 minus log z2. Yeah, that takes care of the straight negative sign. So this implies that i sub 1 is just the dilogarithm of the lower bound being minus 1 minus the dilogarithm of the upper bound being negative 2. Now, what, what exactly is the dilogarithm of negative 1? Well, that is pretty cool, because the dilogarithm of z can be expanded as the sum over k from 1 to infinity of z to the k over k squared for absolute value of z being less than or equal to 1. So that means the dilogarithm of negative 1 
equals the sum over k from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k squared. And if we introduce an extra negative 1 here and balance that out over here, then we have negative Dirichlet eta function at 2, which is pi squared over 6. So we have negative pi squared over 12. Terribly sorry about that. Zeta 2 is pi squared over 6. Its cousin eta 2 is pi squared over 12. Okay, cool. So this implies that i sub 1 here indeed equals negative pi squared over 12 minus the dilogarithm of 2. Negative 2, that is. So now it's time to compile the results. So I'm going to have to move back, back up here. So it's supposed to be the working in orange with i sub 1 over there. And we also have a negative 1 here because of the working in white. So the negative 1 goes pretty well with a negative 2 here. So that way we have negative 3. So all of this stuff plus i sub 1. So finally, we have the target integral i equal to 3 log 3 minus 2 log 2 minus 3 minus pi squared over 12 minus the di logarithm of negative 2, which is pretty cool indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.